my mic on. Good morning. Uh, this morning in our worship service, we are going to uh, hear sections of God's word that remind us of the tremendous blessing that we have because Jesus came. I know we do Christmas every year, and we're getting, and it's just same old, same old. But this is not same old. This is not something minor. This is the most amazing blessing we could ever hear about, that God came into the world to save us. And not something we can remotely take lightly because it changes everything about who we are, about what's going to happen to us in eternity, and quite frankly, how we're going to live our lives here. And so we're going to focus on that wonderful, unexpected, tremendous blessing we have because of Jesus. The service that will follow is, as usual, it's printed out for you in your worship folder. Uh, you're invited to follow along there. And we'll begin with our opening hymn, and that's hymn number 313. Hark the glad sound the Savior comes. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, 
and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil. Hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church and all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus Christ, and come with the good news of your mighty deliverance. Drive the darkness from our hearts and fill us with your light. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 35. Uh, it's a series of pictures that the prophet is giving about God's salvation. And the main point here, if you want to think of it this way, the salvation we have through Jesus is a solution of opposites. We were dead in our sin. We, we were doomed. And yet Jesus has brought us life. And the main picture that Isaiah is given is one of a desert, dry, arid, dead. And God says, I'm going to bring springs. I'm going to bring life. This is what we have in Jesus Christ. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongues shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there nor any ravenous beast, they will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and those the Lord has rescued will return. 
They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. This is the word of the Lord. We join together to sing Psalm 146. Our second lesson this morning is taken from the New Testament book of James, chapter 5, verses 7 to 11. You know, as Christians, as God's people, uh, one of the dominant things about us is that we are a people who live with an unfulfilled hope. We're waiting for our Savior to return. And James reminds us, because we are a people uh, who wait for a hope to be fulfilled, that one of the dominant attributes our Father in Heaven loves to see in us is patient endurance. That regardless of what is in our lives, we patiently endure holding on to the promise of our Savior. James writes, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. This is the word of the Lord.
Please rise for the gospel. Our gospel lesson today is taken from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 to 11. It will serve as the basis for our sermon today. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We join in the hymn of the day, hymn 324.
Grace and mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to consider our gospel lesson from this morning. It's recorded for us in Matthew chapter 11. In the name of our triune God, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ our Lord. Occasionally, things go better than expected, don't they? Occasionally something's broken, but it was... It was just the batteries, new batteries, it works. Oh, whew, don't have to buy a new one. Occasionally that friend or relative, we've all got one, you don't have to think of who it is, right? but we've all got one who gives odd Christmas gifts, things you don't really want. Occasionally though, they get it right and you get a good one. Oh wow, didn't expect that. I'm used to getting odd things from you. But every now and then, Things go better than expected, don't they? In our text, there were circumstances that led to some very low expectations. Things Things were not going well. But as Jesus talks here, he reminds us, no, things are going exactly according to God's plan. What was up with Jesus? What was up with John the Baptist? He's stuck in prison and Jesus says, no, no, no. It's all going to solve just right. There's unimaginable blessings coming from this. Wonderful things are happening. This morning, I want you to just think a little bit about the unexpected blessings we receive as we stand in Bethlehem and think about our Savior being born, as we think about his death and his resurrection, the, the unbelievable blessings that we have because Jesus came into the world. I should note to start out as we think about this text from Matthew chapter 11 that theologians have long debated why John asked the question. The question that John asks is, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? The reason this is debated is because John the Baptist is the guy who says uh, when Jesus comes walking up to him in, in John's gospel, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist is the guy who, who baptized Jesus Heaven opened, voice of the Father, dove descends. John had saw all that. How could he have doubts? How could he be asking, are you the one who was to come? And so some say he couldn't. So John's reason for asking was he sent his disciples and his motive was, well, the disciples, John's disciples would hear the answer. They were the ones who needed to hear the answer. And so John was just getting them to go talk to Jesus. But others say, no, no, John's stuck in prison. Is that what he expected? Perhaps doubts arose. And when Jesus answered, he said, go back and tell John. Jesus wanted the word to get back to John, so maybe maybe John did have doubts. It's fun for theologians to debate things like this. The Holy Spirit didn't inspire the answer, so I don't think that's actually the point. The point is, what did Jesus say to the question that was posed to him? The question was, are you the one who was to come? Are you the Messiah? And Jesus' answer was a thunderous, yes, I am. That's exactly who I am. His answer was to quote from our first lesson from Isaiah 35. You remember what was said that the Messiah would do? The deaf would hear, the lame would walk, the dead would rise, the good news would be preached. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing the exact stuff that we, God said in the Old Testament the Messiah would do. In fact, in the verses right before the ones Jesus uh, quotes or alludes to, the verses right before that in Isaiah 35 say, Your God will come. He will come to save you. And then he'll do all those things. That's me. I am God who has come into the world and I've, I've healed the sick and I've raised the dead and the, the blind see and I've proclaimed the good news. I'm the one who was to come. It's me. Of course, Jesus didn't look all that divine as he walked around, did he? He didn't look like God walking through the world. His followers were some rather unimportant people, not the influencers of his day. The powerful people, 
of Jesus' day were the ones Jesus confronted and said were all wrong. Jesus had done nothing about the, the political situation in Israel. Life hadn't changed all that much because Jesus had come into the world. And so people were tempted to think, well, maybe he's not the one. But Jesus had come to do the most unexpected things, to give the most unexpected and glorious blessings we could ever want. These miracles that Jesus alludes to, the, the blind seeing and the deaf hearing and the lame walking, all pointed to the fact that your God will come, from Isaiah 35. God had come into the world, and he had come with a very specific purpose. He had come to save. At this point, when John's disciples are asking this question of Jesus, the work was not yet completed. Jesus had more to do. He'd tell you when he was done. He'd make sure you know. He'd say, it's finished. It is finished. I have paid for sins. You are saved. He would make sure that you knew he had accomplished the work that he had come to do by suffering and dying for the sin of the world. Suffering and dying for us so that our sins would but be washed away. This is the most glorious, <clears throat> unexpected blessing we could ever receive from Jesus. That we have been reunited with God. That the sin that separated us from God in this life and would have separated us from God for, <clears throat> for eternity has been completely removed by Jesus. Don't be fooled by what you see or what you think about the spiritual condition of this world or your own natural spiritual condition. Sin is not something that the world gets to determine. Like we get to decide what's good and bad. Sin is not something that you get to decide if it's good or bad. If it was left to us, we'd all pick the stuff that we didn't do, right? The stuff, the weaknesses I have. Well, that's not so bad. God tells us what sin is. In his word, he clearly spells it out. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Fall short of that. You have sinned. There aren't excuses that make it permissible. That's what God expects of us. And sin offends God. And Jesus came to remove every single bit of sin from this world and from your life. He came to make us into God's people by his death, to wash us clean and pure, to renew us, to tell us that even death has been destroyed. Death is destroyed by his resurrection. And that now we stand before God as righteous and holy, pure, because Jesus Christ accomplished everything for us. This is the most unexpected blessing you could receive, that although the circumstances in your life might not have changed all that much, your status with God is absolutely secure because of Jesus Christ. And his love for you will not stop. He will never leave you. Too many people look to Jesus and expect him to be the one who's gonna make everything in this life go the way we want it to. Give me the stuff I want, take away the stuff I don't want. That's all I really need from you, Jesus. Jesus isn't that small. Jesus came to give the most unexpected eternal blessings by making you God's child and washing away your sins. And then Jesus goes on to talk about other unexpected things. How about that John the Baptist guy? What about him? stuck in jail by the time our text takes place. What'd you expect from him? Do you think he'd just come and tell you what you wanted to hear? Nah, yeah, that's not why he came. Think he came so he could be rich and famous and wearing nice clothes? No, that's not why he came. He came, he came to prepare the way for the Messiah. He came to prepare the world to hear that Jesus was coming. And Jesus says he, he did it perfectly. He ended up in jail, sure. But he did the work that God had set before him. Among those born of, women, of woman, 
there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. That locust-eating, camel-hair-wearing, forgive me, weirdo out in the desert. Nobody greater has ever come. He did exactly what I wanted him to do. Fulfilled his mission perfectly. Don't be fooled thinking that because he got stuck in jail, he failed. He did his job exactly as I wanted it done. What an unexpected blessing for John to hear that commendation when the disciples brought it back. Jesus said you did it. You did exactly what God, what God wanted. And then comes the personal, the most unexpected part for us, for you. Yeah, that John the Baptist, nobody greater. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. You know what he's talking about, right? He's talking about you. Greater than John the Baptist. He's talking about the results of Jesus' work in your life. That your Savior has set you free from sin and made you God's child. Your Savior has made you an heir of eternal life. You will spend eternity with your God. Jesus is telling you how God views you. Your service, your faith are great in the eyes of God. God sees greatness when he sees you because he sees that Jesus Christ has made you into God's child. Granted, your life may not feel all that important. I'm not doing the stuff John the Baptist did. John the Baptist had a once in history calling job from God. I don't have a job like that. I'm just a regular person. Yet Jesus says what he says. Greatness. Greatness to those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. Greatness to those who trust that for the sake of that Savior, all sin is washed away and that your service to God matters. It may not be the same service that John offered. Of course it isn't. But it's the service that God has set before you in your life. And God says, Jesus says it matters. What an unexpected thing to hear Jesus say to us about our greatness, not because we're personally so great, but because of the greatness that Jesus gives to us through faith. Blessed, Jesus says, blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Truth is, these statements from Jesus are so amazing, they sound like, well, that just can't be true. That's just some crazy God talk. That, that can't be true. That God considers me to be great. Jesus knew what he was saying. He knew exactly what he was saying, and he meant to say it. You are redeemed and loved by God. You are forgiven. You are going to live in heaven. The gifts God's given to you are the gifts he meant to give to you, the service, the places he's given you to serve, or the places he means for you to serve him. And so Jesus says, greatness. Don't be fooled by what the world says greatness is. Don't be fooled by what the world expects out of life. You see more because you see Jesus. Listen to the, what the world says and you'll receive what you should expect, a big bunch of nothing. But listen to what Jesus says. Listen to what he says he's done for you and who you are. And you will see that that, that first lesson we read from, from Isaiah 35 about just miraculous, wonderful things happening, that's talking about the results of Jesus' work in your life. That God has opened up for you opportunities to serve in this world. That you are a light living in this dark world. That joy and gladness are yours in spite of the circumstances you face. Because you know Jesus Christ. That you, as Isaiah says, you don't have to be afraid. Say to those who are afraid, don't be afraid. Your God will come to you. You know it. He will. He will not leave you. Greatness is looking to your Lord Jesus Christ and seeing his greatness. Greatness is seeing the glory of God lying in a manger when Jesus came into the world at Christmas. Greatness is seeing your Savior die and rise for you and knowing that because that happened, <coughs> excuse me, because that happened, your life has changed. 
Brothers and sisters, may you see the unexpected greatness that is yours because the great God and Savior Jesus Christ came into the world and saved you. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue on page 10 of the worship folder, joining together to confess the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. O Lord, the stories of your compassion are endless. May we always look to your mercy and be moved to give you offerings that reflect our confidence in your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise for prayer. This morning we include a prayer for Barb Lidke. She's a fellow or a former member here at Good Shepherds and she is recovering from surgery from this past week. Come, dear Savior, we long for your appearing. Come to cheer us with your promises as you once cheered your ancient people through their long night of waiting. Come to restore our hope, rouse us from the slumber of despair. Lift our hearts from petty earthbound goals and direct our eyes above from where you will soon come to make all things right again. Come and work in us a godly grief and a genuine sorrow over sin. Forgive us for the shameful way we have dishonored you and the shabby way we have dealt with one another. Through your mighty word, stir up in us a ceaseless yearning to give ourselves to others. Come also to rekindle our joy as we prepare to celebrate your first coming. Do not permit a frenzied busyness to rob us of your peace or deprive us of times to ponder and to wonder at your word. Set our hearts apart from the bustle and the clamor and the jostle of these days. Fill us with delight in finding you in the manger. We pray also for those who are enduring sorrow, for those who are undergoing trial, and for those whose restless hearts have no knowledge of your coming. Comfort, strengthen, and illumine them with the sweet peace born of your love and keep them in the way of peace by your holy word. And O oh God, giver of life, health, safety, and strength, we praise you for having granted your servant recovery from her surgery. May Barb daily remember your great goodness, that she may serve you with a life that reflects genuine thankfulness for all of your blessings. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions.
Come quickly, Lord Jesus. In you we wait, in you we keep watch, and in you we put our hope. Amen. And we join to pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Through his holy prophets, he promised a king to bring light to those living in darkness and in the shadow of death. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink of it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen you unto life eternal. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Good morning again. As far as announcements this morning, a couple 
for the calendar to highlight. First off, today we do have a voters meeting to call for a seventh grade teacher uh, for Living Hope Lutheran School next year. That call meeting will take place after late service over at the Woodlawn campus. Uh, so hope to see you there. Please try and attend that one. And then something that will remind you of the closer it gets, but for Christmas and New Year's this year, both Christmas Day and New Year's Day are Sundays. And so what we're doing is that both of those Sundays, we are going to have church at 9 o'clock, two Sundays in a row. After that, we'll then go back to the regular 8 and 10.30. But just so you know, on Christmas Day and New Year's Day, we're going to have services at 9 o'clock. So like I said, we'll repeat that uh, as it gets closer, but just so everyone sees that change to the schedule this year. And then finally, a thank you to everybody who participated and helped out, or even if, if you just came to a uh, night in Bethlehem last night, we had well over 300 people come through. So it is growing even bigger uh, every year. So certainly a very great blessing from the Lord. Uh, and it was wonderful to have uh, members of Living Hope from all uh, the former churches coming together and helping out with that. It really was a fantastic night. So thank you to everybody who was involved with that. And those are the only announcements that I would like to highlight. So may the Lord richly bless your week.